Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about some common mistakes that guitarists make, myself included, when it comes to sweet picking, but even better, I'm going to show you how to fix these mistakes. Did you say steak? <laughs> Now guys, with all my videos, I'm going to be honest and transparent with you, and I'm going to tell you right off the bat that sweet picking and playing sweet arpeggios, that is not my strongest point as a guitar player. What you heard me play just now, I actually had to work on that a few times, as, and I was recording it in the studio here. I actually had to go back and forth with that a few times before I got something that was presentable. However, I'm now going to let you hear something that's not so presentable. This is a short clip from my practice session last night. I figured, hey, let me film this. And it's a little sloppy, and there are several mistakes that I make throughout what you're about to hear. And after you hear that, I'm going to break down all the mistakes that were made. So, so here's some sweet picking patterns that aren't so polished. <laughs> All right, so there's four sweet picking patterns that you hear and see in the video, and we're gonna break this down piece by piece. So let's listen to that first part again. There's some, there's two really big mistakes that I make in this first part. So let's hear just that first piece one more time. One thing I could have done differently right off the bat is before I start sweet picking with that downward motion, I could have done an upstroke for the note that I played before I started that pattern. If you notice in the video, you'll see me pick a downstroke and then I'll downstroke again to start that pattern. If you do an upstroke there, that will kind of help you be a little bit more fluid because you're already getting used to that, you know, upstroke then downstroke. You're already kind of getting used to that. So that might help you be a little bit more fluid in starting out because you'll notice that I actually missed some of the notes there, or maybe I didn't miss them, it just was kind of sloppy. I didn't pick each individual note. That pick did not rake across all of those strings. Now, the other thing I did here, I tried right away to integrate some tapping, which that sounds cool, and that's a really great way to get that full sweet pick effect. You know, you play that arpeggio, and then you do that tap, and that was like a hammer on and then a tap. So I did a few little notes. Now, I did not plan this out. By the way, I didn't plan any of this out, what you just heard me play. This was just kind of you know off the cuff. I'm just practicing in my studio here. Uh, but again, I wanted to share this with you because it's a really good example of a lot of mistakes that, <laughs> that you can make when you're sweet picking. So the taps there, if I could change that, like if I were going to record that on an album or something that I was actually gonna release, which I wouldn't dare release what you just heard. Uh, but if I was gonna record something, I would have to have a better thought out pattern and that's one of the mistakes I made there. I really didn't think out what I was doing at that point. I just kind of like, well, I'm going to tap some different places and what happened was I kind of got lost there, you know. It's one thing to improvise. Improvising's great because you can come up with some really amazing things, but sometimes I like for you guys when you're practicing to have a, a structured practice routine and that means even down to the notes that you're going to practice you can add notes and stuff like that here and there uh, but just in general i want you to have a structured practice routine where this is what i'm going to play get really proficient at that then you can add more notes to that pattern if you want to so that was the two big mistakes that i made there now let's hear the second pattern <laughs> Once again, I missed some of the notes. I didn't articulate each note with that pick. So you can see that I hit the notes there, my fingers were there, but my pick was not going across all of those notes. The reason why that probably happened is because it happened in the beginning. And if sometimes if you make a mistake in the beginning, then you carry that pattern throughout the rest of your guitar solo. And of course, that kind of makes you have to trash the entire solo. It doesn't always happen like that. Sometimes you might make a little mistake, but you may like catch up later and it's like, okay, well, kind of made up for it with this other cool look over here. You know, that happens on stage all the time with musicians, even, even the best of guitar players. You're gonna hear them make some mistakes, but usually they can make up for it. However, if you start out with a bad habit, if you start out, you know, with like, oh crap, I missed some things, that has a tendency to carry over the rest of that guitar solo 
And I think part of that is one is just you've kind of like put in your head, this is the way I'm playing, so you know it carries on. But number two, sometimes you realize that you screwed up in the beginning and that really messes with your psych throughout the rest of the solo. So really trying to nail it from the beginning will help you, you know, move through the rest of that solo almost flawlessly. Now, I did some hammer-ons and tappings and I thought that was pretty cool, that sounded cool. Again, I didn't really think this out before I did it. And I'm not saying you have to like plan every single note. Again, I love playing off the cuff, that's just how I do things. You may do things differently and that's fine. Uh, but sometimes there is a time to plan out your guitar solos, to plan out, okay, here are the notes that I'm playing. I was practicing at this point, so I really wasn't trying to play anything particular. I was just practicing the technique. Now, where I messed up though, is when I came back down, or went back up rather, in the upstroke, and going in, before I go into that third pattern, which we're about to hear and talk about, it got real sloppy. You hear that one string that I hit, and what I could have done better here is muting your strings with your palm on the bridge there. And that's kind of how you have to play sweep picking patterns. You sort of have to mute those strings as you're sweep picking. Now, that becomes kind of difficult when you've got to move your, your right hand or your picking hand up a little bit to do those taps, those hammer ons and taps. So that becomes a challenge, but especially when you're going back up and before you transition into that next sweep picking pattern, if that's what you're gonna do, it's a good idea to really quickly move that picking hand back, get that palm back there so you can mute those notes in between because that note that I hit, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's pretty clear. <laughs> yeah, that kind of sucked. Now let's listen to the third pattern. Okay, so that part was just horrible. I should not have even shared that with you guys, but hey, you know what? I'm putting this out there for a reason, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but uh, that piece right there uh, was just probably the sloppiest part of this entire sweet picking pattern that I'm sharing with you. Again, this goes back to, I kind of started out rough, so that mindset and that, you know, whatever you want to call it, this, this in there, that kind of just carries on throughout the rest of the pattern here. And it showed, especially in that third part. Here's pattern number four. This is the final pattern. Now here, I did something right. I actually slowed down this pattern. If you notice, those notes are articulated a lot better than the other patterns that I played. I had realized by this point, and I'm like, let me just kind of slow things down a little bit and focus on those notes. Sometimes it's best to do that. Actually, a lot of times it's best to do that. Instead of trying to play fast all the time, sometimes it's best just to go through those patterns kind of slow and give it a little bit more feeling and then make sure you're hitting those notes and articulating those notes as you play, especially when it comes to sweet picking. Now I threw in some more tapping here, which was kind of cool. And then I went back up. I kind of did an upstroke there for a couple notes and then quickly went back down with the downstrokes and then did that final hammer on and tap. Now the thing I would do differently here is I would not just end on that, that high dull note. I would end on the same note, but I wouldn't make it as dull. Cause it was like those high notes being played just sitting there, they don't sound good. What I would have done if I were recording this or playing this live and kind of going back and thinking about it, I would have added like a whammy bar or something like that. So that would have been kind of a cool technique. And uh, actually, let's, let me see if I can pull this off for you real quick. Let's see if I can do this. I actually did a decent job at that and I nailed that in two tries. So a few takeaways from this little lesson that we've had on sweet picking. Number one, it's a really good idea to kind of plan out what you're going to play, especially when it comes to sweet picking and especially if you're like me and that's just an area you struggle in. Now another thing is, is when you're practicing, don't try to play fast sweep arpeggios and fast sweet picking patterns. Instead. First, focus on articulating each of those notes. Each of those notes need to be heard. You need to have that really smooth downstroke and upstroke, and you need to be able to hear all those notes. And the way to get better at that is just slowing things down and really getting that mind to muscle or mind to hand connection there and just make sure that you're hitting each individual note. You're sweet picking it, not picking it. We are, you know, we're, we're doing the fluid downstroke and upstroke, but make sure that you can hear each individual note as you go through that pattern. If you do that, 
it'll be easier to gradually build up your speed. Another thing is remember to mute your strings with your palm. Mute that bridge there, kind of like your palm muting when you're playing metal rhythms, but mute that as much as possible. Use that and get really good at that technique because that's a lot of times how you get that really smooth sound, that smooth and fluid sound, is as you're sweep picking, as you're doing those downstrokes and upstrokes, you're muting those strings that you just played okay those notes you just played you're kind of quickly muting that it's a little technique involved there well it's a lot of technique and it's, it's not easy but the more you practice the better you will get at it so practice your patterns very very slow and let yourself allow yourself to gradually build up speed don't try to play everything fast right away even if you're an amazing sweet picker that sounds like a pretty cool job by the way hey what do you do for a living I'm a sweet picker, better than a nose picker. But regardless of what level you're at, and I think those of you who are more proficient at sweet picking, you realize this, even when you sit down to practice your patterns, you're going to start out slow because it's almost like you have to reset your mind and reset you know, your, your abilities there, if that makes sense, and just start out with those patterns slow and then you're back up to your speed in no time. But you always have to start out by really focusing on one note at a time throughout those patterns. The last tip is really putting in the work and being consistent in your practice, okay? Especially with this technique or really any technique that you struggle with. If you practice for a couple days, but then you, you don't practice that technique, let's say for a week or even a few days, it's really difficult to build up greatness in that tactic, in that technique. And I'm living proof of that because I have not really been practicing sweep picking patterns for probably the past two or three weeks. I think some of you know, I've been playing out uh, some acoustic gigs lately. So a lot of my time has been, you know, practicing acoustic songs and learning new acoustic songs and of course writing some of my own so I can play out. So I haven't really been in the studio as much practicing much less practicing sweet picking patterns. And hey, I'm not Superman. It, as great as I may get at something, after a few weeks of not doing it, it <laughs> my technique just goes to poop. And of course, that showed in the video that you watched earlier. And that's why I'm here sharing this with you today. So make sure that whatever technique that you're kind of weak in and you really want to bring that up, make sure that you have a scheduled and consistent practice time for that. If it's five days a week, that's fine. Even if it's three or four days a week, make sure you're you know hitting it on those specific days at that specific time. Don't allow yourself to go several days or longer without practicing that technique that you want to get great at because without consistency, it's probably not going to happen. Now, speaking of practice schedules, I have a free metal guitar practice guide that you can download in the YouTube description. There's a link there. Just click that. It'll take you there. Sign up and I will send you that guide. That guide has helped thousands of guitar players. And even if you're not a metal guitarist, the practice patterns in this book, in this guide that I'm giving you, because uh, there's some lead patterns in there as well, it will still help you become a more proficient guitarist. So make sure to grab your copy. Again, the link is in the YouTube description here. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed watching some of my failures and hopefully I was able to explain these well enough uh, so that you know so you guys can understand. But if you have any questions, please drop those in the comments. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind. That really helps my channel. Uh, you guys have been really helping my channel grow tremendously over the past few months, so thank you for that. I appreciate that. Guys, until the next video, as always, keep it metal.